All right, so at this time, what we'd like to do is do what we just said. We're going to worship. We're going to press in. And I cannot tell you how many people came in and said, by the way, there is an expectancy and awareness of his presence that beat us here. I'm just saying. Amen? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are awesome. You are God. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. And we're here to worship you and worship you alone. We honor you. We give you place in the midst of our praise, Lord God, to be who it is that you are, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would stir the saints here tonight, Lord God, as we press in to discover you afresh tonight. God, would you bring an anointing upon our worship, Lord Jesus. Bring a new sound, as it were, Lord God, to this place tonight, Lord God. May we prophesy in song, Lord Jesus. May we sing songs and hymns to rejoice in you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are here. You beat us, Lord God. to be in the house of the Lord. That's right. It's so good to be with God's people. It's so good to worship together, to lift him up and give him the highest praise. Oh, yeah. He loves to make our hearts his home, our praise his home. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Oh, yeah.
heard a splash in the house. And it was in the deep waters that Ezekiel talks about. To the place where you can't walk anymore. You have to swim. And it's best to hang with the current. He's already started to take us to a place that he so desires for us to know to understand. Lord, we are here to worship you. that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let faith arise. We sing your break in the name changes everything.
He's on your side. You're so thankful, God. That's right. Amen. Glory. Sing he has 
has overcome, yeah, he has overcome the world. One more time, he, he has overcome. Bring change, Lord God, to that which we see in the natural, to that which we should see by the Spirit of God. Come, Lord, and do what it is that needs to be done, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Our glory. Let's just wait. It's not a time to be timid. deep and I was reminded of before creation it says the Holy Spirit hovered over the deep but as the Holy Spirit was hovering over the deep I began to see things that were to come because creation hadn't yet happened but there were shipwrecks and wars and there were shark attacks and there was hurricanes and storms and turbulence of all kinds and he knew, before the first day of creation, he knew the turbulence that would come. He knew that sin would come into the world, and he knew what the repercussions of that sin would be. And yet it says he hovered over the face of the deep. And as he hovered over the face of the deep, what was turbulent became instantly calm. As I heard the words of Jesus say, peace, be still. And he spoke to that water, and instantly it became still. And I felt that the Lord was saying tonight that he knew then and he knows now the times of turbulence that would come into the world, the times of turbulence that would come into your life, the turbulence that would be stirring in you even tonight. And there are some who came here tonight and said, I just don't have any peace. And the Holy Spirit is hovering right now. And he is saying, peace, be still. And if that is you, speak to it now. Peace, be still. Hunger, the year of hunger. Jesus says in John 6, if you eat my body and drink my blood, you have eternal life. Jesus says this is true life, truly living. Everyone left him. And he looked at his 12 and he said, will you leave me also? How hungry are we? He will change us until everything covered, that every part of us is covered by him. Changed inside and changed until we look like him, until we speak like him, until we love like him. When the world looks at us, do they see him? How hungry are we? John 6, 56. If we eat his flesh and drink his blood, you will remain in me and I will remain in you. Hunger, hunger.
place we become, we become 
God, you're awesome in this place. All the angels cry holy. I don't have the right to hold back, Lord. It's innate within me. Praise and worship. I extend to you my very soul. I extend to you my very heart, Lord God. My lips belong to you, Lord Jesus. You equip me. You enable me to sing to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. For the new sound isn't necessarily a new song. It may not be scripted may not be a familiar melody, and yet from the depths of your very being, a sound shall arise, and it will be the new song. The song will bring about your deliverance. Joanna was alluding to it earlier. Many of you came in here tonight struggling. Why? Because we're in a season, guys. But God, who is faithful, who can't help but be God has brought the resolve to you tonight. In Jesus' name. That's it. Yes, Lord. Let it spill. It's inside, man. Holy Lord. Holy Lord. Waters. Oh, tell him I'm sat down. Covering the earth. Oh, Holy Lord. Carry them about, Lord Jesus. Oh, we worship you.
I was thinking about the scripture where Jesus said, whoever drinks of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him which come within him, a well of water, spring of eternal life. And the Lord showed me a picture. I thought I saw a, the Lord holding a, 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 glam, a cup, and he was 
giving a drink to someone, and the person looked like they were very thirsty, like they were, you know, dying of thirst or something, but, and he was almost holding him up as he poured this water into them. Amen. I want to remind you, um, when the Spirit of God begins to move, anybody in this place can prophesy. Because the Spirit is present, and he determines whom and who he will prophesy through. Though you may have never prophesied before, and you may never again, tonight could be the night. So I encourage you once again, if God should share something with you, would you please write it down? We need to transition and move on um, just to honor our guests. Um, so again, there's a basket in the back near the water, I believe. Yes. Okay. And so if you have something, write it down because it may be very significant. And we're going to be reviewing it tonight at some point in time. And it may precede something else that we may articulate tomorrow, just as a reminder. So now we're going to just begin to... Um, Transition. And so I was given the task of kind of sharing with you um, a little bit about our theme. It's kind of interesting how it was developed because back in, actually it was late September, early October, um, a group of Ohio guys um, really determined that God wanted to do something. We weren't sure we were going to be able to have anything, but we decided we would press in. And as we were beginning to ponder what it was that God was beginning to speak, we felt like there is an overriding theme that has coursed through the last four or five years of these prophetic conferences. And I want to share with you first that the vision of the OPT, that's the Ohio Prophetic Truth. Several of you in here, how many have attended the meetings or are a part of the Ohio Prophetic Truth? There are several of you that have participated. But one of the things that God told us, and uh, George and Sarah, you could probably attest to this because it's been articulated in the merge as well. And that is that God is looking for those who will be a resource to others that don't have any avenue to learn about him to learn about something we'll be talking about in, in small measure, and that is the five-fold ministry. There's a brand new intrigue for the five-fold ministry. What is that all about? Is it real or is it not? So one of the things that we determined, actually we didn't determine, I think God determined it for us, but we carry in our spirit, and that is the integrity of the prophetic voice. It became way too popular. I'm just being straight up. It became too popular, and ministries sprouted up, and they became very, very, very uh, notable. And I can't point my fingers at it, nor will I judge it, because that's God's business. But I want to say that we realized that we had a portion in your education at another level is all. Because of the grace and the gifting that's in our lives, some of us are prophets, some of us have the gift of prophecy. But God put it in our hearts to teach and equip the body of Christ so they would understand the prophetic. Last year and the year before, we talked about Jesus' observation, what Jesus thought about the Father. Jesus is the best example we have, yes? Something that, that he spoke caught our attention. He said... In John chapter 5, he says, listen, I only do what the Father shows me. And then the Son does the same. That word the same means exactly the same. Jesus had all authority. He says in John chapter 12, all authority has been granted unto me, yet I will not go from this place without partnering with the Father. He says, my father commands me what to say. Listen to this. Command is the word. It means an objective with an expected outcome. My father commands me what to say. And here's the message and how to say it. This is something that's beginning to rise up. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm probably way ahead of myself. I'll be sharing some things tomorrow. But I'm just saying we, we're a little chatty at times. How about we just say what God says and leave the interpretation up to you. That's what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. That's not for me. That's for all of us. It says, don't despise. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. 
but scrutinize the prophetic word that's being spoken. And as you do, take that which is good, which means there may be a segment of that that's not so good, but I'm saying we're gaining new perspective all over again of what this prophetic is all about. So how do we do that? We do that by remaining authentic. The guys couldn't come up with that. Matt's wife, Lori, did. And as soon as we heard it, we go, oh, there it is. Ties right in with where God has been taking us. We're talking about what it means to remain authentic. Authentic, literally, it means to be exactly like, near the same, to do accordingly, according to the vision, the word spoken. So I want to learn that all over again. I'll be talking about a reset that's taking place. I'm not talking about revival. I'm not talking about a reformation. I'm talking about a paramount shift, a paradigm for your mind, a new way of thinking. Amen? So we are fortunate to have um, some gifted speakers with us. And uh, one of them I've known for quite some time. I've served with him years ago at an Ohio prophetic conference that used to be held here in Toledo many years ago. We served together. We were both younger. <laughs> but I learned a great deal in those days. And so Randy, he's, he's associate pastor over at Farn... Far, what did I just say? <laughs> Farn something. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was, but Foundation Stone Christian Church over in Northwood. And he carries a good word. And he has the right heart. He has a shepherd's heart. And so he's not only a prophet, but he's also a shepherd. And so Randy, would you come and share what God has placed upon your heart? Amen. You just see it. Thank you. Where's the look?